That's really what we're talking about, though. We're, take, we're talking about progress. We're talking about steps that we need to take as human beings. You know, we go forward, we go backwards, we go to the side, and that's how you dance, by the way. I'm not very good at it, but you can do that. Life is kind of like that. It's, it's full of different directions that you're going. So when something goes wrong or our expectations are not met, we tend to give up, step back, and retreat. Unfortunately, this is a trend that I see a lot with students your age, is that the moment adversity comes, when something happens, instead of stopping and then trying again, you just stop altogether. And I think you're just missing out on so much. It's all about how you respond. Show of hands, how many of you guys have ever made a pancake before? Yeah. All right, so we have some pancake chefs in the building. And if you're like me, for whatever reason, the first pancake always ends up like this. Why? Why? It's valuable batter. But here's the thing. If I was to see this on the first try, I'd be like, well, I guess I should throw out my batter. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Because pancake batter is delicious. It's not as good as waffle batter, but it is pretty good. But that's how our lives look sometimes when we stop instead of using the rest of what we have. We miss out on so much. So today we're gonna to see that sometimes we actually do need to take a step back, but only long enough for us to rethink and then move forward. The word for that is recalibrate. You guys wanna say that with me? Recalibrate. Good job, good job. So today we're talking about recalibrate, don't retreat. It's the temptation to retreat, but we need to stop think, and then move forward. But the question is, why do we retreat? Why do we retreat? Why do we stop? You know, it always, at least for me, it always starts with that little bit of doubt that causes us to kind of freeze up and stop. And that's not me, it kind of does look like me, but that is not me. I don't have those colored pants. But for me, it always starts with that little bit of doubt. Um, going on the diving board for the first time, for me, that was terrifying. How many of your guys' parents put you in swim class? Yeah. Okay, I guess we were the minority. I'm finding this out today. Swim class is a thing. And so you learn how to swim from going to these swim classes. And diving was one of the, the next things for me to do. And the moment that I think, well, something's gonna go wrong if I jump off this diving board. The moment I thought that, I knew that I wasn't gonna jump off. So for some of us, we get hung up on this one little thing, that little shred of doubt, and it grows and it grows, and it stops us from jumping in. It stops us from enjoying the things that life is about. So you can't dwell on your doubts. You have to jump in. Think about what you could be missing. And really, the deeper question is, where were you headed? Sometimes when we stop, it gives us an opportunity to remember, hey, why am I doing this? And maybe it's something that you need to stop doing. But most of the time, recalibration helps us to stop and look forward to the next opportunity. Think about all the opportunities that you've missed in your life. I think a lot of us can probably at least think of one big one. Like, man, if only I would have done that one thing. I think for me, um, and for you guys too, uh, especially in junior high and high school, one of the, the biggest opportunities that you have and the scariest thing to do is like ask somebody out. It's like, uh, I forgot how to use my tongue when I talk. Like, that's what happens sometimes. And I mentioned this before, but um, my wife right now, we actually were high school sweethearts. And so we started dating in high school. Started dating, meaning I took her to TGI Fridays once. I'm, just I'm not that cheap, but not that much better. So the thing was, it was really hard for me to ask her out. We were friends. And like we knew each other and we were pals and stuff, but it was really hard for me to like build up the courage to do it. But think about the opportunity I would have missed if I didn't. And so I've been hanging out with her. For whatever reason, I couldn't ask her in person every time I would try, like nothing would come out of my mouth. So I, I kind of sunk low and I said, I, I just have to call her on the phone. Like it's easier, I don't have to look at her face, just call her, be like, hey, uh, it, it went something like this. So, uh, uh, I think it'd be cool if 
Uh, 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 if I was your boyfriend, or something like that. It was pretty cringy. Very, very cringy. And a lot of the things in life can feel that way. But think about what I would have missed out if I didn't. Because four or five years later, I proposed to her to be married. And that was also a little cringy. But it wasn't as cringy. The only cringy part was how uncomfortable I felt. Because guys, note this for later, hopefully like 10 years at least down the line. But when you kneel down on one knee, like to propose, you totally forget everything that you had planned and you're like, ah. And so, for me, it was just a little bit of a moment that I had to stop, take a deep breath, and remember, okay, like I had to make a list of the things that I wanted to say. So that, that's very helpful. But think about it, some of the best things in life require us to be uncomfortable. And that's okay. We don't have to retreat when something is uncomfortable. We might be missing out on some of the best things in life. So the next time you're uncomfortable, don't retreat, recalibrate. So we've been throwing around this word recalibrate. What does it really mean? How do we do that? How do we recalibrate? You actually probably know, because if you've been in grade school and high school your whole life, you've been in these two different subjects called math and English. And they've taught you this. Some of you are like, oh no, I came in here to stop talking about those things. And so if you've been in math and English your whole life, let's talk about math. I know for me, I was grateful that I only had to take one math class in college, but by that time I had pretty much learned all I needed to know about math. How many of you guys have said this in a math class to your teacher? When are we gonna use this in real life? Yeah. No, it's a stupid question. It's stupid. And I'm gonna tell you why. I'm not saying you're stupid, I'm saying it's a stupid question. Here's why it's stupid. This is what math does. Math teaches us how to solve problems. It gives you the brain capacity to learn what to do next in a problem situation to find an answer. So practicing math actually trains your brain how to solve problems. Yeah, you're not gonna grow up and probably use y equals mx plus b all the time, but it's because you trained your brain early on to do that, that it helps you out later in life so that when you're facing a big problem at your work or in your family, you know, okay, what can I solve first? What's my first step? Math teaches you how to do that. So don't ask that question ever again to your math teacher. Shout out to the math teachers back there. Yeah. So math, it actually teaches you to move forward. Now let's talk about English. I was a little better at English. And for whatever reason, if you're good at math, sometimes you're not good at English, but that's just the way your brain works sometimes. But I'll share something with you that my English 102 professor shared with me. It's this quote by Robert Graves that says, there is no such thing as good writing only good rewriting. Think about that. There was no such thing as good writing, only good rewriting. So maybe you wonder why your English teacher wants you to turn in rough drafts of your work. At first you might be like, why do you need to see my practice? Like it doesn't make any sense. And maybe you are the lazy student who just, your final pretty much looks exactly like your rough draft. Yeah, but your final product is only as good as how hard you look at your first try. I mean, for instance, when I was writing this, some of these phrases and some of the things I'm saying were completely different the first time, but it's because I took the time to think what would be best to get my point across that I was actually able to come up with good things to say. So maybe you wonder why, but your final product is only as good as how hard you look at your first try. Have you ever tried to carve a pumpkin like without the tracings? Or like if you just started, like sometimes if you're just doing the triangle face, that's fine. But if you ever try to be like, I'm going to make Spider-Man or something cool, and you're like, uh, and then you get halfway through and your pumpkin's like imploded, and you're like, I made a mistake. It's because you didn't look and prepare with your first try. How about this? Have you guys ever made like a poster or a banner that says happy birthday on it? Yeah. All of us do exactly what I'm about to say. We're like, happy birthday. I know how to spell that. H, A, and then you have this much left of paper, and you're like, uh-oh, uh, P-P-Y, birthday, woo, 
Happy birthday. It's because we didn't plan ahead. You're like, why did I choose the purple marker to do this? So you put a ceiling on your writing and your life when you don't recalibrate, when you don't stop to think and rethink. You're putting a ceiling on what you are able to do. So ask yourself, what adjustments need to be made and then move forward. So take this to heart, guys. The next time you feel like you want to retreat, you feel uncomfortable, take a moment instead to recalibrate, then move forward. So don't retreat, recalibrate. Peace.